all of you will have something to take back hope all of you will have something to take back in today's webinar once again i welcome you all thank you thank you madam thank you for the warm welcome now i hand over the session to a special speaker vice principal sir narsha nai sir yeah good morning everybody am i audible yes sir you are audible sir uh, the screen is been displayed there yes sir yes sir uh, yeah okay yeah. so uh, respected principal dean madam uh, dear daphne and uh, all the respected head of the departments uh, my dear colleagues and the students it is a great day especially for me wherein i am uh, uh, giving some of the overviews of uh, a national education policy the term is here implementation of uh, national education policy 2020 so i have put here an overview because it is it is a elaborate policy which has to be understood thoroughly and implementation takes a lot of time uh, daphne are you recording this yes sir yes i am yeah. recording this yes yes yeah uh, thank you once again for giving me this opportunity on talking on this uh, uh, one of the great uh, uh, hot topic of uh, today's uh, the uh, education field so giving the introduction to this national education policy the implementation of national education policy as i have told it may take lot of years but let me give the glimpses of the national education policy or the new education policy which has been termed after 34 years of education policy which was there implemented in the year 1986 now it is been totally revised uh, this this was this is the third a complete revision of the national education policy earlier during independence it was then then 1986 uh, it was the second revision which was there and in 92 there was a small updates were done for the 1986 policy and in 2000 it is completely revised it's completely revised uh, and this national education policy or the new education policy whatever it is is based on the recommendation of a, a committee chaired by former uh, isro chief k kasuri rangan now let me see let me tell about the total the main purpose of this education policy you can see here now of course please don't feel bad uh, everything is uh, totally in uh, it is there is no pictures there is only uh, the uh, word format it will be there lot of things will be there because it is a huge policy of uh, that concise policy itself is a uh, 66 pages and uh, wherein the entire policy is totally divided into two halves one speaks about the primary education and one speaks about the higher education now let me tell about the purpose of this education policy the if you see the purpose of the education policy it, it itself gives you the complete insight of this education policy the purpose of the education system <laughs> is to develop good human beings please remember underline this word to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action possessing compassion and empathy courage and resilience scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical mornings and values this is nothing but you are going to develop a complete human being who has a possession of scientific advantages he has courage and resilience he has compassion he has a great creative imagination and ha having ethical values everything is embedded into one education policy wherein at the outcome of this education policy is once the student comes out of this from this new education policy he should be a complete good human being good human being this is what the basic introduction of this education policy now coming to the salient features of the national education policy before i get into the primary education field and then go to the higher education field so let me uh, tell about the uh, principal glimpses the fundamental principles of this policy i'll read all these things and then explain whenever it is necessary the first point here is 
recognizing, identifying, and fostering the unique capabilities of each student. Please remember here. Here it is not that normal way of teaching is adopted here. And this, whatever the fundamental principles, what I'm telling, it holds good for primary education as well as higher education. All complete education, all put together. Okay. Now it it emphasizes on recognizing, identifying, and fostering the unique capabilities of each student by sensitizing teachers as well as parents to promote each student's holistic development by both academic and non-academic spheres. It is very clear that we need to identify. We know that every student, every student is unique in him. It is not that when he reads nicely, he is a good student. If he is good at other activities, he may not be a good student for a teacher as such. But uh, but here it says that a student can be good at uh, uh, in uh, academics. He may be good at sports. He may be good at uh, singing. He may be good at any other field, whichever he likes. We should identify, recognize, and foster his capabilities. Who has to do this? The teachers as well as parents, they have to promote the students. That's what has been told here. You may be knowing that in China, we see that even in the young ages of the students, they have been identified whether he, this girl or boy, she or he is good at academics, they will be put in academics only. If they are good at sports, they will be cultured in good sports only. They are good at what type of sports? Either it is gymnasium, either swimming or shooting or athletic, athletics, whatever it is. So here also, it has the same thing has to be done. Same thing has to be done. Second point, no hard separation between arts and science. Normally, we have different arts stream, science stream, commerce stream. These are the different streams what we have after once you complete your, your 10th degree, 10th uh, grade. So here, it, it has to be uh, not be there. It has been told, no hard separations between arts and science between curricular and extracurricular activities, bet between occasional and academic streams. There should not be any differences. Everything and anything can be incorporated and included in the education, in the education. So here the, import, the silos between it is clearly it tells that eliminate the harmful hierarchies, eliminate the harmful hierarchies between the silos of different areas of learning. You should not tell that I'm in medical, I'm in engineering, I'm in commerce, I'm in science, I'm in this, I'm in this. Everything should be incorporated. Everything should be incorporated. A student who needs to study a technical education and he is interested in studying some other activities of economics or literature, everything has to be incorporated during his studies. That has been told here. That's what uh, coming to this multidisciplinary and holistic education across the science, social science, arts, humanities and sports for a multidisciplinary world. So this is also been emphasized there. That means a student can take anything as a combination. It is not that a, a engineering graduate, once he comes for the first year, it is not that the syllabus has been framed by a university and we follow the same syllabus. He can have open electives and the, in the open elective, he or she can take any either he can take, they can take fine arts, they can take literature, they can take singing, they can take uh, any other sub, uh, subject like learning, any other languages also, anything they can take. So that there is a total integrity of all languages, a unity and integrity of all languages will be done. So this is called as multidisciplinary learning or a holistic learning education. And next point is emphasize on concept understanding rather than learning for exams. Very important point here. Emphasizing this education policy emphasizes on concept understanding. So concept has to be understood rather than they should learn mug up for the examination point of view. Uh, in, the, in the next slides, I will be telling more about this, how it will be done later. So here it says that concept understanding is more important rather than learning for the examination, for the student's point of view. And ac accordingly, the system should change. Accordingly, the system should change. Next point. So creativity and critical thinking to be encouraged. So here, normally we tell that whatever teacher tells, whatever the elder tells, you just uh, uh, listen to what elders tell, listen to what teachers tell. Now it is not so. Students also should have the critical thinking and creative thinking and whatever the thinking process uh, comes in their mind, 
it has to be tapped and the teacher or the parent should encourage the students so that they will come out in making the logical decision making and which leads to innovation which leads to innovation so innovation is a buzzword here so i'll be telling this innovation in few in uh, uh, in the future slides many many times so next slide promoting multilingualism and power of language in teaching and learning so here this uh, specifically tells about the the primary education system which tells wherein the primary education has to be given in their own uh, mother tongue or the local language mother tongue or the local language so multilingual lingualism has to be promoted so it is not that if you are in karnataka learn only in kannada you learn only in english you can learn any language anything wherever you are and you can you have to learn in your own mother tongue so that understanding becomes easier the concept becomes easier for you to understand this is what it means and next point life skills such as communication cooperation teamwork and resilience has to be emphasized so it is not only learning happening here communication skills has to be developed cooperation has to be developed teamwork working in team has to be developed and resilience so all these skills life skills has to be developed along with the education next point so focus on regular formative assessment please remember here two types of assessments are there one is formative assessment one is summative assessments so here they they want to focus on formative assessments of learning rather than summative assessment of learning which is encouraged in today's coaching culture today's coaching culture today we normally tell about summative assessment which is uh, we call it as a writing skills that is at the end of the semester you we write lot of examination which is a summative assessment which gives lot of inputs which in the writing format but they in the new education policy or national education policy it focuses on formative assessments formative assessments may be small small exams here and there it is not the end of the semester on the end of the year you have a big exam it's a small small exams here and there and all these exams are considered and you will be at the end of the uh, session credits will be given to you so here emphasize is a formative assessment formative assessments you can think about some objective type question answers you may have or uh, some quizzes have been conducted or some seminars have been conducted or some uh, small uh, uh, a program has been there wherein students participate and uh, telling that what they have understood in different ways different ways these are all formative assessments which has to be Uh, inculcated rather than just writing skills improving the writing skills next point extensive use of technology should be used so it is not only just blackboard teaching lot of new technology has to be incorporated in learning so here which increases what happens when you use technology so when you use technology that increase that that increases the the learning skills in the students who are uh, from the rural side students or from the urban side of course they know about the technology but even for the rural side students also this uh, encourages using technology technology means it is maybe the video recording of the classes can be sent or uh, you can ask some uh, certain things wherein students can be instead of uh, they have some network issues or any problems out there they can uh, see it again and again whenever they are free all these things can be thought about and also it says that increasing access for divyanga students the uh, divyanga students means those students who are either physically challenged or something of that kind they are also been encouraged for learning they are also encouraged for learning next point synergy in curriculum across all the levels of education from early childhood and education to the school education to the higher education so everything is been synergized same pattern of learning teaching process will be there which is from the childhood the child is been groomed and it will be learning the same thing whatever he or she is interested till he completes the degree till he completes the degree and the next point is uh, teachers and faculty as the heart of learning process please remember here now teachers role is a very important role here teachers and faculty as a heart of learning process their Uh, recruitment the way of recruitment of teachers the continuous professional development of teachers and the positive working environment in the area where they work and the service conditions all should be taken care because here 
teachers and the faculty members are the heart of learning process that's what we very clearly indicated there that means they are the heart of the learning process and a lot of uh, things have to be taken care for the teachers so that uh, teachers give 100% to the students 100% to the students and that this is the last slide where they here for the introduction part a light but tight regulatory framework is ensured so this it is not a very tight regulatory framework as now they have uh, regulatory framework means for engineering we have aict which is a regulatory body which do lot of uh, frameworks are there and uh, vtu is the one who has one more regulatory body we are been confined within this regulatory body wherein we have to work but now also in future also if it happens it is may, the lot of things are there which has to be done wherein it says that every institution should become a university then also you have a, a tight uh, regulatory framework will, will be there but it says that light but tight it is not very tight it is light regulatory framework will be there but whichever is light whichever in areas which is uh, regulated but it will be tight light light to ensure why it is there to ensure integrity transparency and resource efficiency of education systems through audit and public disclosure so here the framework is there regulatory framework is there to ensure integrity efficiency uh, and uh, through how through audit and public disclosure audit means like uh, lic committee is coming to the institution and uh, going through all everything that's auditing and public disclosure means whatever we do we have to upload in our website or any uh, public places wherein people can go through it and what is happening so and also we should encourage innovation and out of the box ideas through autonomy so here it clearly indicates that the uh, colleges and universities will be given autonomy where only in innovation and out box ideas where innovation happens their autonomy is given you can do many different types of uh, innovations lot of out of the box ideas can be generated and here the autonomy is given to the institutions so next is uh, outstanding research as a core prerequisite that is uh, research is a buzzword once again i have told uh, there is one more uh, that is uh, innovation was there here outstanding research has to be done so so outstanding re research as a co uh, requisite for outstanding education and development so research has to be emphasized and a continuous review of the progress based on sustained research and uh, regular assessments of the education uh, that is by education experts that is what i have told earlier that lic committee or any other committees who are education experts will come to the institutions and they will go through and they will audit the systems what is where are the so this is about the important points which are completely there in the initial uh, first page of the the uh, national education policy okay now let me start with the two different uh, variety two different uh, halves of the national education policy the national education policy if you see there it's around 66 pages of uh, draft is there wherein up to 35 pages it is speaks about the uh, the primary education or the school education and the 36th page onwards up to 66 page it speaks about the higher education and research higher education and research now coming to the school education let me give some glimpses of school education uh, then i will go to the higher education so here uh, the government has a is uh, uh, a big dream uh, that uh, universe that is 100% uh, gross enrollment ratio for the schooling should be done by 2030 that is now the gross enrollment ratio that is number of students attending the schools are less than 100% it is quite less than 60% so overall if you take in india it is less than 60% so the central government the government of india has a dream that so 100% gross enrollment ratio should be there in school education by 2030 and then next important which everyone talks about here is the present 10 plus 2 structure of school curricula now at present it is 10 plus 2 structure that is from first standard to 10th standard it is schooling then you have first puc and second puc or 11th and 12th which is coming under 
the pu board in karnataka so you can, i'll talk about only karnataka here so that you can because you will understand more here so 10 plus 2 structure of school curricula is been replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 so here you can just see everyone talks about this let us understand a little bit uh, about this so this is the first is the five five means it is from the age group of three to eight and the next three years it is in the age group of eight to eleven next three years it is in the age group of eleven to fourteen and the last four years it is in the age group of it is fourteen to it is eighteen fourteen to eighteen so at the end of eighteenth year you will be completing the 12th standard that is grade 12 they call it as grade grade 4 grade 5 grade 6 and likewise it goes to grade 12 so at the by today's education system is also same thing it is at the end of 18th year we will be completing second pu but here also it is the same thing but structure is different structure is different there it is 10 plus 2 here it is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 5 plus 3 plus here also it says that teaching up to grade 5 to be in mother tongue or regional language it is optional once again it is a grade 5 grade 5 means fifth standard grade 5 means fifth standard that is up to age of 11 up to age of 11 it can be the teaching can be done by the by your mother tongue or the local regional language say for example if you are in Kannada in Kannada medium it will be taught if you are in Tamil Nadu Tamil medium will be taught and wherever you are it will be in the same regional language it will be taught so that teaching learning becomes easy and its understanding becomes easier so this is the uh, box diagram the block diagram of uh, the previous existing academic structure and the new academic structure it is very clear i hope everybody can just uh, go through it uh, you can see this now this slide can you can see daphne Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Now, uh, any questions till now? You can please ask anything. Anybody? So I'll explain once again this format of a new academic structure. It's very clear. The second uh, blocks. Uh, there are some four blocks are there. It is uh, very clear. So this uh, first block, uh, the second one, the bottom most, it is written there. So you can see there three years. Three years. It speaks about this. Uh, three years are Anganwadi or preschooling. Anganwadi or preschooling and next two years it is class one and class two so all these five years it is called as a foundational stage it's called as a foundational stage so here multi-level teaching will be there and activity based learning will be there activity based that is a play play home is like some like something like a playing play home so likewise students will be very happily learning there is no burden there is no great homework there is nothing like that students come out enjoying the schooling up to five years up to five years this is called as foundational uh, five years first five years second is the preparatory stage that is next three years so that is from class three to five age group of eight to eleven so here again once again they play discovery activities activity based learning interactive classroom learning all these things will be there it is not just a teacher coming taking a book taking a big ruler and uh, asking everybody to memorize, write homework 100 times. It is not so. It is different type of teaching learning process altogether happening. So it is totally discovery, activity-based learning and uh, interactive classroom teaching learning process. So this is the preparatory stage. That is the second stage. That is the second phase. That is three years. That is up to uh, fifth standard or class five or grade five. Next is uh, the middle stage that is next to three years so here it is class six to eight age group of 11 to 14 11 to 14 so here uh, it is uh, experimental learning of in the sciences mathematics arts social science and humanities so a lot of things are happening here so people will not be learning only uh, with the with the present situ present things people also learn social science people learn arts people uh, humanity sciences or so many things are there uh, which they can learn which they can learn from here onwards the english starts the english starts until fifth standard it is english may be there as one of the subject but holy it is completely it is with the regional language or the local language to talk and uh, from uh, uh, class six onwards english will be uh, taught. 
and the last four years that is from class 9 to 12th that is complete schooling it is complete schooling uh, class 9 to 12th at the age from 14 to 18 that is called as a secondary stage that's called a secondary stage here you can see here multidisciplinary study it is a greater critical thinking will be there flexibility will be there and student choice of subjects is very very clearly told that student choice of subjects in case even it has been also told that in the next slide i will be explaining vocational training is also given in this stage vocational training okay i will tell about this vocational training next so this is what it explained once again i will uh, just go through it so the new education have uh, 12 years of schooling from uh, three years of anganwadi and preschooling so to total 12 years of schooling only there is no school and pre-university it's only school it's only school and who will frame this ncrt will develop the national curricular and assessment reforms uh, which has been made a 360 degree holistic pro uh, progress card tracking students progress uh, for uh, leaving achieving learning outcomes so totally ncrt that is the central board will be taking care of the the national curriculum that is the total assessment and curriculum is taken by, by by ncrt you don't have a state board you don't have a central board you don't icic education system nothing will be there it is only one type of education system it is ncrt then every school should follow the same syllabus across india pan india so it is the one which frames that uh, only the curriculum is framed there and assessment reforms also will be done there with the 360 degrees holistic uh, process will be there and including progress card tracking of students progress and uh, achieving learning outcomes everything will be done by ncrt and as i've told earlier vocational education to start from class six with internship so vocational training uh, vocational education so a lot of different uh, educations are been given say for example poor students are there they don't want to do degree they want to uh, do some vocational training vocational training may be vocational training may be you want to you want to uh, learn uh, some uh, training programs on uh, stitching you want to learn on cooking you want to learn some vocational training on uh, uh, say masonry work you want to learn vocation or carpentry or any other any other which is of your style skill or you want to uh, upgrade yourself in sports you want to upgrade yourself in music anything of uh, this one you can just start there and learn from class six onwards with the internships also with the project small small projects and internship this starts from class six not from uh, final year engineering and all students will take sc school examinations in grade three five and eight there's not every year you have examination grade three that is third standard fifth standard and eighth standard you have examinations you have school examinations which is conducted by the appropriate authority probably a district wide examination will be there so these people will be uh, taking up the students will be taking up at the examination in the third standard fifth standard and eighth standard but board examination uh, that is a pan india board exams will be there in grade 10 and grade 12 will still continue uh, to be the same grade 10 and grade uh, 12 so 10th and 12th board examination will be as usual as usual and it can be taken two times in a year it is not that the same one examination is be taken uh, two examinations will be given for grade 10 uh, and grade 12 and whichever uh, students have scored more that will be considered that will be considered a new national assessment center a new national assessment center parak that is performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development will be set up as a standard setting body so this is a uh, different assessment body will be set up which is called as parak which uh, is the full form of that is performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge uh, for holistic development so this is the national assessment center which will be developed uh, to set up will set up will be set up for the standard setting body and a great emphasis will be given for socially and economically disadvantaged ad advantaged groups that is as usual now also we do it special emphasis will be given for uh, socially backward disadvantaged groups maybe SESC uh, groups or backward students or socially backward or economical backward students such will such students will be given more emphasis this is about the uh, primary education or school education 
so let me tell you about something about higher education now till now any 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 doubts anything anybody whatever i can uh, clear i can uh, i have understood i will tell okay fine next let us go for higher education probably now this is the one uh, wherein everybody are more interested about learning uh, how higher education will be so the first point where it discuss about the gross enrollment ratio what has been same the first point discussed in the schooling the there the aim of the central government was the gross enrollment ratio for schooling should be for 100% but here for higher education they have a target of 50% they have a target of 50% by 2035 the central government has a, a target of a gross enrollment ratio for higher education by 50% by in uh, 2035 because the current uh, gross enrollment ratio in higher education is 26.3% so almost 25% it has to be made double it has to be 100% increase in gross enrollment ratio should be there in higher education by 2035 that is in 15 years it has to be done uh, and also 3.5 crore seats will be added for higher education this is the next that is the dream of the central government more 3.5 crore seats will be added for the higher education so that uh, everybody uh, will be having the privilege to learn higher education uh, next point the holy the holistic undergraduate education will be flexible uh, curriculum uh, uh, now you can see that the 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 present system the present system you have a 3 years degree course you have a 3 years degree course and a 4 years degree course is there and with the multiple exit options are not there in present system multiple exit options means what now a student for example he has joined engineering the engineering is a 4 years degree course and he has joined and he wants to leave the first after first year because of some reason maybe financial reason maybe health issues maybe he is not interested in studying now or uh, the 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 situation at home maybe not permitting him to continue his education whatever may be the case after one year of his education if he leaves then he is called as a dropped out student he is a drop out student but henceforth this will not be a drop out student so he can leave his education of the one year and after one or two years when all his problems get sorted out he can once again continue his engineering from second year onwards from second year onwards this is the greatest point which is there in this higher education he will not be called as a drop out student he will be called, called as a drop but there are some points to be noted here i'll tell it uh, so after completion of one year the student will be given a certificate that is the first year certificate will be given provided provided he completes all his credits please remember if students are there he or she should complete all the credits it is not just come to the college stay for one year and take a certificate and go it's not possible you have taken some subjects and all the subjects have to be cleared and all the credits have to be there with you then only the certificate will be issued after one year then after one year second year if you want to leave then a diploma certificate will be given to the student third year if a student wants to leave because as now you know that a bcom or bsc it is for 3 years and engineering it is for 4 years there are some degree uh, degrees are there for the 3 years and some degrees are with the four years here also the same thing all bachelor's degrees are made with three years only next hence for all bachelor's degree with three years after completion of three years a bachelor's degree will be given to the student and if the students take up fourth year and he wants to complete four years of education and come out then the certificate will be bachelor's degree with the research will be given that means the fourth year he will be doing lot of research lot of projects lot of research oriented project so here the four after completion of four years the student will be given a bachelor's degree with the research will be provided to him so first year if he leaves that is a certificate will be given second year if he leaves a diploma will be given 
third year if he leaves just a bachelor's degree will be there and after the fourth year of after completion that is bachelor's degree will be with the research will be given but provided he has to complete all his credits he has to complete all his credits please remember just a completion of one year doesn't serve the purpose he has to complete all the credits and all the credits whatever he uh, he has got it it will be kept in an academic bank of credits the third point academic bank of credits will be established to facilitate the transfer of credits that means if i have i am a student i have uh, i have joined a college say for example if i take a dr ttit i have joined and i have completed my one year i have completed all my credits say for example now i have some 35 or 36 credits to be done i have completed all my credits and that means some uh, uh, six or eight subjects in a, one year has to be completed because there are in the later on there will be subjects will be reduced there will be major subjects and minor subjects will be there all the major and minor subjects of my choice whatever i have taken i have completed on the, all the credits are there in my academic credit bank now i want to leave i want to leave the institution because of some compulsion my parents are been transferred i am going to say pune i am going to pune now what to do i can leave this institution and go there and get into the second year that is one option or example number two i have some compulsions i am leaving in between i am leaving in between because of financial crisis i want to get into some job i will do some job after two years my all my financial compulsions are over then i'll think about studying i can come back if i am here i can come back and join my old college that is dr ttit or at that particular after two years i am in delhi or haryana or tamil nadu whichever part of india i want to continue my education i can go to the respective college i can show my academic bank of credits they will go through it and they will give the direct admission to the second year onwards second year onwards so this is the advantage for the students they can learn anywhere anything across pan india so this is very important second uh, the mphil course which was there till these years is been discontinued so there is no mphil course at all once uh, you would complete your four years degree then you have one year masters degree then you have you can directly do your phd then you directly do give you do your phd so after masters degree they directly science streams now also they have mphil degree mphil uh, will be discontinued there is no more mphil henceforth and this academic credit point, uh, bank whatever academic bank of credits what i have told there all your credits will be stored next very important point so multidisciplinary education and research universities meru what they call multidisciplinary education and research universities will be set in each district in each district at par with iits iims with a similar model of iit and iims even iit and iims uh, even indian stuff science also they have to go for multidisciplinary studies now for example iit which speaks about only technical education henceforth it is not so iit is also should incorporate other streams of education iit khadakpur already has started medical education medical sciences are been set up there and today's paper times of india you can see there in uh, indian of science after 123 years medical education is been set up because every bigger universities all the streams of education should be given for the students say now if i am a student of first year engineering and engineering i have uh, say six subjects are to be studied two major subjects and two minor subjects in, uh, at one stretch and two major subjects I, ha I have to take it in technical education and minor subject i can take one as a fine arts i can take one as a economics i can take one as a, say uh, cultural some 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 uh, singing i can take it i can take it uh, every student are have, having that privilege so likewise multidisciplinary education has to be done so because i am interested in science even i am partially interested in economics also economics comes under commerce stream so here being a engineering graduate i can learn engineering and parallelly i can learn one or two uh, subjects from other streams also 
other streams also wherein i will become my education becomes a holistic or complete education so this is what it tells about so multidisciplinary education and research universities will be set up and the national research foundation will be set up which is the apex body to foster strong research culture so because henceforth research is a, a very important word in higher education without research there is no higher education at all so national research foundation has been set up which is apex body which fosters uh, the strong research culture and building research capacities across higher education higher education so higher education commission of india is been set up so this is the single umbrella which takes care of all varieties of education systems in india except medical and legal education except medical and legal education all different varieties of education let's uh, say um, bit uh, technical education uh, mba bit mba bit commerce bit everything whatever the type of uh, education systems are there every education systems are brought under this uh, single umbrella body which is called as higher education commission of india so henceforth aict uh, uh, ugc and other things will not be there it is only the higher education commission of india that will be set up a single uh, umbrella body which takes care of all higher, edu higher education excluding medical and legal education all public and private education institutions will be governed by the same set of norms there is no different set of norms the same set of norms will be there for public and private education institutions all different regulations accreditations academic standards everything will be the same under this uh, single umbrella body that is higher education commission of india four independent verticals are there one is national higher education regulatory council for regulations which is take, looks into the regulations of the higher education next general education council gec which takes care of the standard settings what are the different standards to be there how the education should be uh, standardized next higher education grants council for funding for funding higher education grants council is there which takes care of the funding and next the national accreditation council that is nac for accreditation henceforth in the once the national education policy is implemented there will not be different varieties of accreditations like now we have nac only we have nba we have different varieties of accreditations will be there henceforth once the national education policy is implemented there will not be different accreditations will not be there it is only single accreditation will be there for each and every education institution higher education institutions one more important point here affiliation of colleges will be phased out in next 15 years that means all the colleges however now now we tell that our education our institution dr t minds technology is affiliated to vtu now in next 15 years maybe in 10 or 15 years all these affiliation colleges will not be there there will not be any affiliation at all with any of the universities will not be there at the universities and stage wise mechanism will be there to establish uh, for granting graded autonomy for the uh, colleges that means every institution should be converted itself into a university the main purpose is every institution should convert itself into a university or initially there will not be a university slowly a graded autonomy will be given slowly autonomy is given to the every institution stage by stage there is a mechanism will be there which will be established for granting graded autonomy for the colleges so in a 15 years time all the institutions will be uh, independent will be independent so over a period of time every college is expe expected to develop either into an autonomous degree granting college or a constituent college of the university constituent college means the university is college say now bangalore university has a uh, uvc or uh, ubdt is under uh, the one of the universities in north karnataka very similar coimbatore university is so likewise that's uh, constituent colleges may be there of the university or it is autonomous or a, uh, it is a uh, what now we call as a deemed university very similarly it is a university itself every uni every college should be a university which can degree which can grant a degree to the uh, students 
innovation and entrepreneurship in higher education as i have told uh, in turning in the last previous slides a lot of emphasis will be given for the innovations henceforth it talks about only innovations so the buzzword of the globe for the 21st century is innovations in uh, simplest term innovation could be defined as converting ideas into new or improved products processes and services now here if i talk about innovations what does it mean does a other other colleges other, every college will not do innovations yes we try doing innovations we try doing innovations here we doing innovations normally is we publish papers we publish paper we emphasize on publishing papers that is we do small time research we do small time research and convert our research into publications into technical publications but here it emphasizes on innovations means taking the inventions into marketplace the second term you just read that innovations is about taking inventions into the marketplace by how you do it by translating scientific knowledge into products it says that you have to convert your idea into a product and this product has to be commercialized it has to be sent to the market and make money out of that make money out of that this finally again ends up at entrepreneurship this finally ends up at entrepreneurship once you give more emphasis on entrepreneurship then automatically the economic and social development will happen in the society that is for example in our institution any of the branches we have say 60 students are there out of that at least 10 students become entrepreneurs 10 students become entrepreneurs there's a great uh, dream 10 students becoming entrepreneur then 10 students will give at least some 50 or 10 10 uh, uh, job to other students so that everybody will get a job everybody will get a job so this is the final agenda this is the final agenda wherein the students should convert themselves into entrepreneurs should convert into entrepreneurs when they convert into entrepreneurs the economic growth as well as social development will happen our honorable prime minister of india has declared uh, that uh, decade 2010 to 2020 as a decade of innovations so almost 2020 2010 2020 is done so uh, decade of innovations lot of innovations also have happened so even if you go through google and see lot of innovations have happened and our, uh, our ranking international ranking on innovations has also come up uh, seriously if you see it was uh, 86th place in five years ago and now it is 57th place in 2020 and because of this covid pandemic now slowly it has come down otherwise uh, hope this pandemic will close by 2021 and henceforth the uh, good things will happen in 22 uh, so that uh, the overall growth of our country including all our students uh, will definitely will be having a bright future in future So this speaks about uh, the global innovation. So for India to emerge as a global innovation hub, the youth of our country, especially in higher education institutions, need to play a critical role, a crucial role to create sustainable innovation ecosystem. That's what everything is emphasizing here. That is students or the youth of this country should uh, not only just go and uh, read and uh, uh, update yourself from the, the book knowledge rather than you create yourself, uh, look into the outside world, uh, come out with new ideas, and then uh, and uh, see that innovations happen in the institution. Innovations happens in the institution. So now, if I categorize the institutions, we have uh, uh, now at present two different, uh, three different types of innovation uh, institutions are there. One is uh, purely innovative institutions. Second is purely teaching institutions and third is uh, blended institutions blended institutions so purely innovation institutions are those institutions which uh, totally rely on innovations like uh, iits and iisc so uh, this uh, institution uh, uh, tata institute iisc that is totally it is uh, innovation based some of the institutions are there which are bound by some regulatory bodies wherein we have syllabus prescribed then we are totally teaching related. We are totally, totally teaching. 
so we concentrate on only teaching uh, one more type of uh, universities uh, institutions are there which has blended they have say for example now dimmed universities autonomous universities are there wherein they they can frame their own uh, uh, syllabus they can at least give some importance to research as well as uh, teaching learning so there are three different varieties are there so henceforth it will be only innovative type of universities will be there innovative types of universities all colleges in 15 years if you think dr ttit also will become a university and definitely it will have around more than 3000 students and it will be one of the universities in polar district and all other colleges will be affiliated or uh, autonomous university autonomous uh, colleges of our university that should be a dream uh, of uh, today so hopefully if you everybody works it will happen it will happen that's what it talks about the ecosystem has to be encouraged inspire uh, young, uh, young students by exposing them to new ideas uh, and uh, uh, process resulting in innovative activities all this talks about innovation so so here ends uh, the the total uh, the national education policy of uh, two, uh, 2020 which has totally two divisions one is uh, um, primary education or school education one is higher education so now uh, coming to the implementation of national education policy till now national education policy is not started in a, in a, uh, vigorous terms it has not started but in our college we have indirectly started in our college we have indirectly started how it has started because in the in the as per the directions of government india government of india and ministry of education we have several initiatives taken like institutions innovation council aria ranking nirf ranking and nisp all these whatever are there we are a part of institutions innovation council and we are also uh, in the uh, atal ranking or atal ranking of institutions on innovation achievements we are also there in nirf ranking and we are recently we have uh, we are also there in nisp also and uh, uh, i think some couple of days back uh, even dr pd sudarshan sir had given a talk on nisp also uh, which talks uh, about uh, national innovation and startup policy so with all these things whatever is there uh, we are very fortunate that we are in all these activities even though we are we may not have a great uh, things to be uh, showcased in the atal ranking or uh, nir ranking but whatever it is we are there in the ranking today we may be small but tomorrow definitely we will grow tomorrow definitely we will grow if we religiously do all these things in a better way and if you try implementing the accreditation process also and there is no doubt that in next 10 15 years we will be a uh, autonomous institution or a deemed university and we can cater the entire district of Kolar. So uh, having said this, uh, there are some more slides are there which speaks about IAC, ARIA ranking, NIRF and NISP also. So here uh, because the time schedule given is uh, one hour, so almost it is done. So it speaks about uh, uh, different uh, ranking procedure which uh, is not related to this. So I will take up this in some other time okay thank you very much for patiently hearing me any doubts anything I, which i know i will definitely try to uh, solve thank you sir thank you for the wonderful session sir so there is one question from manjirat sir sir uh -huh. um, which major um, gap is identified in nep 2020 and how it is taken forward now major gap means uh, uh, Manjurat sir, if you are there, you can ask sir. Can I not ask? Sir, are you there? You can ask which major gap is identified in NEP 2020 and how it is taken forward. No, major gap in the sense. So here, uh, the National Education Policy 2020 is a complete uh, renovation or completely new education policy. That's why it's called new education policy. Earlier it is national education policy, different national education policies were there. This national education policy is completely new, wherein... Uh, yeah, yeah, Professor, Professor huh? I, will, I will answer that. Huh? Okay, so see, the gap is that, you know, 
the present system of education is examination oriented root learning is there am i right yeah, so yeah. innovations are not happening am hmm. i right there are a lot of gaps are there mm -hmm. so all these gaps have been taken care in the new education policy yes so only thing is that this uh, new education policy is totally aimed at outcome based education correct sir hmm. totally is based on the outcome based education so once we get into this outcome based education which is the gap am i hmm. right so yes. the, the whole thing will be taken care of hopefully because this uh, national education policy is the time tested uh, yes. system which has already been implemented in advanced countries correct am i right so they are reaping the benefit of these innovations hmm. and a uh, lot of patents are happening lot of you know developments are happening new technologies are happening am i right yes so sir. so it is not only the knowledge gaining it is implementation and getting the outcome of all our you know studies Correct. so those gaps which are there in the present systems and even in the of course uh, unless the the national education policy is implemented mm. and uh, if uh, because it is a continuous process Correct. so it is not that you know everything every system is 100% you know full proof there yes. is some gaps and those gaps will be taken care once we start implementing it yes, as sir. of now the system is 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 to overhaul the whole system mm -hmm. so that itself we have to think about it and then go about it so yes. that should be the, the the thinking process manjunath i hope you understood it and if you know any gap there in this means initially you can find out faults with every system but yes, uh, that is not the thing so the system which has been you know uh, the india is trying for the higher education or for the schooling system to bring about you know a lot of changes the outcome right. based outcome based yes. education system they want to implement so when the other countries are reaping the benefit why india should not benefit this yes, is the that is the importance i think yes. i think to some extent i answered if yes, sir, uh, yes, sir. You know, if you yes, want to add you can add Arun no, no. Manjunath can add. Manjunath can also add. Uh -huh. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So there's one more question, sir. So yeah. as most of the institutions transform into autonomous as per NEP, how it may be envisaged? As most of the institution transform into autonomous mm -hmm. as per national education policy, how mm -hmm. it may be envisaged? Who has asked this question? Anjanath sir, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, shall I answer to him? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, autonomous is that first we need to get accreditation. So without accreditation, we cannot, you know, get into, you know, uh, autonomous status. That's one thing is there. So Shanae sir has already said there are three types of institution. One is totally innovative or highly research institution. Am I right? Correct. Second one is a purely on teaching learning process. That's all. Yes. Hmm. Third one is about the 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 blended. You said okay, maybe you know these institutions are independent on totally that they can give degrees on their own, degrees on their own, something Correct. like deemed university. I'm hmm. right. And also in that they may have that you know degrees will be given on online you know uh, platforms also. So lot of you know degrees also will be available. Correct. when they can you know learn online also or distance learning mm -hmm. so there are so many things which are coming which you know uh, helps these you know uh, the the candidates or the students to you know have a lot of you know benefits out of this system so uh, i think i hope i answer to this question or you can yes. add professor yes thank you thank you sir so dean madam has asked a question from when the nep will be implemented for primary level no thus uh, it is not yet started so central government has initiated this and the state state government has decided to go with the national education policy the last year there were uh, discussions were there and uh, hopefully after this pandemic they will become continuing and uh, in the 2022 or 23 onwards uh, probably will be uh, going through this it is in a phased manner at once it cannot happen because the system which was there from last 60 70 years you cannot change it at one stretch but it will take time probably that's what that they have given 15 years time they have given 
within 15 years time changes have to be done thank you thank you sir any more questions from anybody from the participants thank you thank you sir no no one thing one thing okay so i think excellently you have covered process and i so yes, primary sir. and higher education more we excellently have done i hope many of us are understood in totality what is yeah. na national education policy and this has to be submitted to act whatever it may be the case see more and more students has to be involved and we need to you know educate them and also the uh, the faculty members so yes, now sir. now see the impact implementation one part mm. how the teachers has to transform one right. am i right mm. uh, then how the curriculum has to be framed second mm. am i right how right. the assessment has to be done mm. apart from whatever you have said these three are very challenging for any institution moving forward yes sir so very challenging am i right so yes. what we need to do see they are speaking about two three things one is uh, the multidisciplinary a lot of things they are telling about multidisciplinary mm -hmm. second one is innovations mm -hmm. am i right uh, uh, and so many other things assessment wise is also you know different so multidisciplinary is very important now how to adjust to these things see this is you know we need to plan from now itself so that yes. we should not be you know starting late Correct. see what we have to do we had to have short goal of 5 years then mid plan mid goals of 10 years and mm. as you rightly said that everything will be you know implemented you know gradually till 15 years the long term policy of 15 years so now ourselves had to you know plan for next 5 years what are the things we need to do yes sir next 10 years what we need to do mm. and the next 15 years what is our you know targets or what are our strategies so that we will you know achieve completely as per the national education policy yes, and uh, so that the students also will gain the faculties also will gain the, you, the 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 institution also will gain so we had to set up one thing we are in the right direction of you know uh, getting into the innovation cycle so this yes. is we have started so we had to strengthen in that in uh, next 5 years we had to have ranking of all these things Mm -hmm. apart from accreditation once we get accreditation automatically will start getting the ranking of a uh, the saria nip nsp nrf all those things yes sir. okay so this should be our short term goal of five years and meantime all our faculties has to you know i will give you an example when a when a teacher goes to the class when he solve a problem mm -hmm. that problem he has to you know indicate how he can you know use it for interdisciplinary uh, programs multidisciplinary Correct. suppose mm. one you know uh, a teacher in civil engineering design rcc how mm. it will helps the other uh, you know disciplines to you know uh, get to know about this thing applications i mean right, not only in the civil engineering department how it may help the electronics department how it may help the computer science okay so the students should know that each topic each problem each application is multidisciplinary so yes. this type of you know learning has to be done and teaching learning process has to be done in this direction this is yes. what national education policy is what they want to implement yes sir it is not that you know a student should be strictly adhering to civil engineering only if you ask something about electronics he should not say i don't know yes he should not be like this so like that you know computer science engineering people also has to know about some you know electronics something about electrical maybe other um, automation uh, robotics like this you know lot of things has to be you know learned so the importance of you know project works research works research works in multidisciplinary projects in multidisciplinary has to be encouraged and all the faculty members has to you know has to start learning this artificial in, uh, intelligence uh, machine learning and uh, see a lot of things they have to learn so that they will also become multidisciplinary so we need to have a program short term goal strategy for all our faculty members so that we can prepare our students to take up these new challenges this is the actually you know uh, the national education policy what we need to implement since yes, we sir. now we are attached since we know attached to the university 
university will be taking care of this already they have implemented the uh, human values uh, courses like yes, that sir. they may also add certain you know activity points are also there yeah 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 uh, activity yeah. points so ah. many things already they are taking care of right. so mm -hmm. we need to implement it similarly the faculty members also has to become multidisciplinary not yes. that they are only expert now the thing is that it is you know the the, the whole system of uh, the specialist is been uh, uh, taken away by you know master of all trades okay yes. so mm -hmm. one has to be there so that he should understand uh, many number of you know fields so that he can contribute more to the society Correct. So Correct. this is this is what you know was lacking in earlier because we used to produce lot of specialists, but they were you know once that become absolute and they will become you know absolute themselves. So yes. it should not be like that. So a particular faculty has to be a, a experts in all in, mm -hmm. of his own interested areas, more than two or three, mm -hmm. so that he can contribute more. I think lot of these things are there, professor. Something yes, you yes. know we, we what we'll do next. You know maybe. From your own, you know, staff or your own, you know, innovation cell, uh, we will prepare for, you know, for our five-year strategic plan. Yes, sir. Uh, for our institution to start with, next ah. for ten years, for fifteen years, we'll discuss all those things. We'll start, okay, so that the roadmap, if it is there, then yes. it will become easy for our institution to develop, so that the all the stakeholders uh, will, you know, get benefit out of this, and we should okay. never be behind. We should not, you know, now at present is okay because we are under uh, university. To correct, some correct. extent, university is taking care of. But yeah. again, when we get, you know, autonomous status, we should be doing more than what the university is offering when we get actually the autonomous state. So I, I think, you know, this is what I had in my mind. But uh, excellently done, Professor, once again. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you uh, congratulations to you. And uh, we will work together. We will work together. One more, uh, 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 one more uh, from uh, AACT and BT also, we have one more program next coming. So I yeah. request all the faculty members to join that so that we will uh, learn more about uh, uh, yeah. national education policy also. Mm. Okay, that's fine, yes. Professor. That's yes. fine. Yes. So next thing is that five years goal plan, we will plan its strategy roadmap for yes. our institution. So that we will have because all these accreditation bodies want what you have understood, what you have planned. What are the uh, plans for you for next five years? At least we should need the short-term goals. Okay. Yes. Course. We'll do Thank that, you. sir. Because these innovation cells are there, accreditations is there. Then mm. how we need to, you know, make the faculty maybe inter interdisciplinary by having, you know, uh, the faculty development program, making them to learn other than their own subject. So many things we need to implement and get that all the faculty members are well prepared to face these uh, challenges. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank uh, you. So, thank you everybody for giving me an opportunity. Thank you, Principal Sir. Thank you, Dean, Madam. Thank you, all HODs. Thank you, everybody, for having joined. Thank you very much, sir. Over to Daphne. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this excellent session, sir. We also gained a wide knowledge on various uh, features in uh, education system, that is, primary education, and uh, various facilities that students can avail in higher education system. So all of us gained a wide knowledge with regard to higher education system and we got a uh, deep insight on innovation and uh, entrepreneurship related to this um, higher educational institutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for delivering such an excellent and innovative uh, session. And I request all the participants to uh, fill the feedback forms so that you'll be getting your uh, participation certificate. So make sure that your email IDs are correct and your uh, name is correct because last time um, many email IDs were wrong. So your uh, you might not have got your uh, certificate. So I request you to send the correct email ID and uh, correct spelling of your name in the feedback forms. I thank all the participants for uh, like our uh, students and faculties for participating in this webinar and making it, making it a grand success. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>